Hello everyone and welcome. I hope you're not yet bored of rotary engines. They are quite cool so I'm going to continue to talk about them and in this video we're talking about hydrogen powered rotary engines. Now Mazda has been developing hydrogen powered rotary engines uh, dating back to the early 1990s and then in 2003 they developed the RX-8 Hydrogen RE so a hydrogen powered uh, Mazda RX-8 which not only could use hydrogen as fuel but it could also use gasoline as fuel. Very neat. And then they sold this vehicle in 2006 uh, in Japan. So there's actually, you know, Mazda rotary engines running around out there uh, that are powered by hydrogen. Do any of them have apex seals left? I don't know. I don't know if there's actually still any on the road today, uh, but very cool that they were once sold in Japan, powered by not only hydrogen, but also gasoline. Okay, what do you think about rotary engines? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> now I already have a video explaining how this rotary engine works. So that's not really what we're gonna get into in this video. Instead, we're learning how is hydrogen implemented within this engine and what changes does that cause for it? So the engine operation is just like it was previously. You've got your intake, you compress that, sparks ignite it, power, and then you press that out the exhaust. Same thing with hydrogen. The only difference is now we're going to add a direct injector up here on the top. So we're going to directly inject into the combustion chamber during the intake stroke. And they will also have one uh, installed on the intake. So they'll have two hydrogen injector locations, uh, one to directly inject into each rotor and then one for the intake. Uh, and for the intake, that allows for pre-mixing, so you can have some mixture of hydrogen going in already, depending on what the driving conditions are. Now, if you're using direct injection, you want to make sure that that fuel has enough time to mix with the air around it. And this is one of the advantages of a rotary engine. So in a piston cylinder engine, if you have 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation, that piston moves from the top down to the bottom. That's your intake stroke. In a rotary engine, you actually have 270 degrees of rotation at which you're pulling in air. So you have longer duration of intake stroke, which means that you have more time for that fuel to mix within the air around it. So just to demonstrate that very quickly, here you have your intake port. So your air is coming in here. You can see that port, uh, difficult to see, but in there you can see the port where air is allowed to come in. So as you start to rotate this rotor here, if we look at our rotor starting at about right here, so facing down, we're just beginning to start to expose that intake port. We rotate 90 degrees. Now that intake port is fully exposed. Rotate it another 90 degrees. The intake port still exposed and then we close it off right there at 270 degrees. So you have a longer duration for that fuel to mix within that combustion chamber. Now there's two additional points with regards to hydrogen being used in this direct injection scenario and mixing well with the air around it. First of all, hydrogen has a very high diffusivity. That means once it's injected, it spreads out and creates an even mixture very quickly. It's much faster at creating that even mixture versus gasoline. The other advantage is that hydrogen has a very wide range of combustible air fuel ratios. So that means if you do have a lean area, you can still likely have combustion occur because hydrogen can still burn at as high as 180 to 1 uh, by mass air fuel ratios. Now another unique property of hydrogen fuel is that it has a very low ignition energy. It's about 10 times less versus gasoline. That means it's very easy to ignite it. You don't need much energy to do so. And so this is a disadvantage because it can cause knock. But the unique scenario of using a rotary engine means that you don't have those hot spots like you might have in a piston cylinder engine. So a piston cylinder engine, the spark plug may get quite hot. It could cause uh, pre-ignition with a hydrogen fuel. You also have exhaust valves that get quite hot that could cause ignition of that hydrogen. But in a rotary engine, you don't have that problem. First of all, you don't have those exhaust valves getting hot. And also you separate your cold and hot sides of the engine. Now this is generally a disadvantage from a sealing perspective with rotary engines but from a pre-ignition standpoint it's quite good because it means the top of the engine is always going to have that cool intake portion occurring where you don't want that pre-ignition of your air fuel mixture to occur versus the bottom of the rotor housing where you're going to have all of your combustion occurring uh, and there it's fine for it to get hot. So you don't have to worry about you know backfiring and misfiring and detonation of that air and fuel mixture in here because you don't have the hot spots like you might have in a piston cylinder engine. Now with rotary engines you're going to have two spark plugs, one here and one here. And so once that rotor comes over it'll ignite that mixture 
and you can see there's a very long but very flat combustion chamber. And so that's why you have those two spark plugs. It's to help speed up that flame propagation within that very long combustion chamber. And one of the unique benefits of hydrogen is that it has a very high flame speed. So you'll still continue to use those two spark plugs, uh, but with hydrogen, you'll combust all of that fuel sooner because the flame travels faster. That means you make more power and your engine is operating more efficiently. Another property of hydrogen fuel is that it has a lower quenching distance versus gasoline. So the quenching distance is the distance from the wall at which the flame will extinguish in the combustion chamber. And so if you're looking at the rotary engine as it's passing along, so it's compressing that air fuel mixture, you get to hear where those two sparks ignite. You've got some really tight spaces in here. And because hydrogen can burn closer to the wall, you can see that in these narrow gaps right here, that hydrogen can still burn versus gasoline has about a two millimeter quenching distance, hydrogen's at about 0.6 millimeter. So that means you burn more of the air fuel mixture and you have less hydrocarbons going out of the exhaust. And those are two problems that the rotary engine has, uh, not complete combustion and sending those hydrocarbons fuel out the exhaust, neither of which are good to do. It means they're not efficient uh, and they don't have great emissions. So by using hydrogen, it's able to get in those little crevices and continue to burn and make sure all of that air fuel mixture is burned rather than being sent out the exhaust. Now, speaking of emissions, if you're only using hydrogen as the fuel for this engine, that means you won't have any carbon emissions because hydrogen fuel doesn't have carbon within it. So there's no CO2 produced from the combustion. There's no carbon monoxide produced from the combustion process. Now, unfortunately, hydrogen fuel burns quite hot. And so it's not emission free. You actually do have nitrogen oxide emissions uh, because of the temperatures getting so hot within the combustion chamber. So Mazda has two ways of addressing this depending on the engine demand. When you're at a low RPM like we see right here, what Mazda will do is reduce uh, the amount of fuel injected so you'll have a very lean air fuel mixture and by running a lean air fuel mixture, you reduce combustion temperatures. By reducing combustion temperatures, you reduce the amount of NOx emissions. But what if you want power? So you speed up the engine RPM like we see there. And as you get into these higher RPM, what Mazda will do is they will use EGR to help cool the inside. So you're not gonna have as much air going in. You're gonna have some of that exhaust routed back to the intake and then in the engine, and that's going to cool combustion temperatures, help bring down the amount of NOx emissions, and then you'll also use a three-way catalyst to help reduce that as it goes out the exhaust pipe. Now, Mazda's engine can switch between gasoline and using hydrogen. And so if you're just using hydrogen, you've got the advantages of lower emissions and better efficiency. And if you're running at a lean air fuel ratio, like 68 to one, double hydrogen's air fuel ratio, then you can also reduce NOx emissions as well. Unfortunately, using just hydrogen alone, your range isn't that great. And so that's why they have the dual fuel system. You've got gasoline uh, if you need the longer range, hydrogen uh, for the cleaner emissions and the efficiency benefits uh, for shorter range distances. So hydrogen fuel actually takes up a very large space. Uh, and as a result, your range won't be that great because you need a large tank in order to go a far distance. But the benefit of you know, using a rotary engine, it makes a lot of sense in a hybrid vehicle so you've got the range extension from this very small compact engine. Uh, if you're using hydrogen, that means you know you can have clean emissions and then have that battery electric for the majority of the driving. Uh, so charge it using you know electrical power and then have that range extender, uh, which is compact. It's small. It's clean. If you're using hydrogen, Mazda has actually said that they will be bringing back uh, the rotary engine, uh, and they have announced this recently, saying that you know it's going to be used as a range extender in a battery electric vehicle. Uh, so very cool to hear that it's going to be coming back. It will be gasoline, I believe, uh, but neat that it's going to be coming back and we'll get to see more of the Mazda rotary engine. Uh, what changes they make will be cool to find out. Now, as far as the RX-8 in 2006 that used both gasoline and hydrogen, the way that it works is you have the same old injectors from the gasoline engine, and then you add that injector for the hydrogen for both direct injection as well as in the intake. And so what happens is if you run out of hydrogen, it will automatically switch to using just gasoline and run like a traditional gasoline rotary engine. And the driver actually has the ability to choose which fuel they want to be running on. And finally, I found a study that showed that you can actually use both gasoline and hydrogen within the combustion chamber together and improve this engine. So a study found that by injecting a 10% hydrogen mixture along with gasoline, they were able to improve thermal efficiency by 28%. 
break specific fuel consumption by 38%. They were able to reduce hydrocarbons by 85%, reduce carbon monoxide emissions by 64%, and reduce CO2 emissions by 36%. Unfortunately, nitrogen oxide emissions increased by 137%. So what they found was if they ran the hydrogen mixture lean, increasing the air fuel ratio by about 50%, they were able to actually reduce nitrogen oxide emissions by about 61%. Uh, so fascinating stuff. It's very cool that you're able to use hydrogen as a fuel and that Mazda has actually put out an engine, uh, you know, that you could buy in Japan in 2006 and drive around in using hydrogen or gasoline. If you guys have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below. Thank you so much for watching.